Hi everybody and welcome to today's example. Um, today what we're going to be going through is uh, this example I wrote up just a second ago. So um, yeah, it basically shows you, I know there's a lot of writing here and stuff like that, but basically we have some sort of reaction, okay? And it's showing you an energy profile, they've nicely shown you one. And then the question is, um, from this energy profile, is this reaction endo or exothermic? Okay, so just before we were looking at endo exothermic reactions, um, and basically what we knew is that an endothermic reaction needs energy input and an exothermic reaction will release energy. So let's have a look at what the energy is doing. So let's have a look at the reactants. The reactants look like they're at pretty high energy and then the products actually drop in energy. So there had to be a release of energy between that and that. It doesn't matter what this part is doing, it's going up, it's going back down to the same level, so that really isn't important. The only essential thing is to compare this to that. And as you can see, the energy is being released. Just look at it and you can tell. Okay, so if energy is being released, then we know we basically have an endo-exothermic reaction. So this is actually exothermic. Alright? So that's the first thing to do. That's the first part of the question. And that was nice. Alright, so um, the next thing that we have to do is we have to find um, delta H. So if we find delta H, if we remember what our calculation for delta H was, our delta H is the energy of the products, products energy, take away the energy of the reactants. Okay, P for products, R for reactants, and we can figure out the energy. Okay, so let's calculate it. Delta H. Now, if you look at this energy profile, it will tell you what um, the energy of your um, products are and what the energy of your reactants are. Remember, at the very start, you always have reactants here, um, initially to the left-hand side, and here you always have products. It doesn't matter where it's located, you have products here and reactants there. Okay, so... As you can tell, the energy of the products is you just literally just read it off and you take the negative along with it. So negative 80, okay, um, kilojoules or whatever the energy is in. And if you look at the reactants, it's actually take away, it's actually zero. So if you take zero away from minus 80, it doesn't make a difference. It's still minus 80. And I think the units for this particular question was just kilojoules. Um, so that way you have now got the delta H and it makes sense. We can expect to have a negative delta H for an exothermic case. Okay, so that's all good. We've now figured that one out. Now the last question says, asks us to figure out the activation energy. So the activation energy uh, is very important. If you remember what it is, it's actually the amount of energy that needs to be inputted. Um, so it's this, this part here generally. Um, the amount of energy that needs to be input to break down the atoms of, you know, nitrogen and the atoms of hydrogen and to re-scramble them and make that. So obviously you need to input energy and that's known as the activation energy, okay? So as you can see, from, from around about here, from that point to about there, we, um, that was the actual investment of energy that needed to be inputted into this equation. So that is known as the activation energy. So activation energy, AE, is equal to, um, activation energy is always positive, so it's the final energy, take away the initial energy. So it's 25 kilojoules, which was your final, take away your very initial, so take away zero. So obviously the activation energy is just 25 kilojoules. Okay, so that's the amount of energy you needed to invest in order to, um, yeah, get this reaction to happen. <clears throat> now, what I just wanted to show you all is what would happen if you decided to um, change the reaction around. So, if they decide to flip this around, they can also ask you, because this is a back and forth equation, they can also say what would be um, the activation energy of the backward reaction. And because you're allowed to go backwards, as you can see, you have two arrows. You're basically you're flipping this whole situation around. You're making this a reactant now, and 
and you're making this a product. So you're going backwards, you're going from here, you're going up there, you're going down here, and you're going there. Okay, so that's your reaction now. Alright, and so that's going to actually change your delta H. Let's have a look at how um, backward reaction is going to change delta H. Delta H will now be, it will still be products, product sequoia reactants, but it's been flipped around. So the energy of your reactants, your reactants are going to be these. So now because you're going the reverse way, that might be confusing. But these essentially become your reactants in this case when you're going backwards, and this becomes your product. So what ends up happening is you get the value of that, and you get the value of this. You work it out. You go product, which is zero in energy. Take away reactants, which is actually minus 80. And as you can see, when you have two minuses right nearby each other, it converts into a positive. Kilojoules. So you've changed from an exothermic um, to an endothermic by going backwards. So the sign has flipped around. Okay, so that's what happens to delta H when you go backwards. Now, let us consider what the activation energy does of the backward reaction. Okay, so there's also an activation energy backwards. Activation energy of backward reaction. And basically what... The way to figure it out is, again, to pretend that you're here. So you're starting off from here and to all the activation energy that you need is all of this up to the very peak here. Okay? So that's the amount of energy this reaction needs to even get motivated to start. Okay? So it needs to at least have from here up to there to even work. Okay? So that's known as the activation energy. It starts it up. Alright? So if we calculate that... Um, the activation energy of the backward reaction this time, we still have to take the final energy, which is 25, um, minus the initial energy, which is actually minus 80. Okay? So don't get freaked out about the minus. Alright? This is part of the rule. The final energy minus the initial energy. And because the initial energy happens to be minus, then you have two minuses there. And the activation energy actually becomes 25 plus 80, which is 105 kilojoules. And that should make sense to you. I mean, it's logical that in an endothermic case, you need to put in more energy to break down your reactants. Because your reactants are more stable and you want to make something less stable. So you need to put in more energy to even stimulate that to happen. Okay, so that was just a quick example. I hope that helped. Uh, for your understanding of endo and exo um, thermic reactions and these energy profiles. So feel free to check out the website and um, there's a lot of good stuff on there. So just roam around and of course ask any questions. If you don't understand something, I can make another video and explain it in a different creative format. Okay, so thanks for listening and catch you later. Bye.